Konnichiwa. So you might be wondering what we are doing in our van today. A while ago on our social media, we posted a question to you all to ask us some questions, and it's a long time overdue. So sorry, but so today we're going to do some van life Q and A. Yep. So let's get to the first lot of questions. Yes, ah. So first is a question of how are you guys doing? Uh, we've been pretty well. Yeah, so as you can see, we're still alive and kicking. It's been two months, three. Mm, two months? Yeah, two months. Two and a bit since we've started our van life. And I think we've kind of got used to it. I feel like we've been doing it forever. Yeah, we've kind of got into a routine of it. It doesn't yeah. seem like scary anymore. But the night is scary. <laughs> That's true. We don't like driving at night. But in terms of living in the van, we are fine. Pretty simple, pretty easy for us. Yeah. So the next question: So what is the proposed length for the journey across Japan? How long are we planning on taking? Uh, as a, as a weekend. So we don't really have an exact proposed length. Um, no. We do have a kind of budget set out, and it will get us around the majority of Japan. But after that, we're playing it by ear, I yeah, guess. Like <laughs> we sometimes stay at the same place if there's a really nice area. Like, Sometimes it takes long. We are not really sure. Yeah, right. so it's not like we have to be at a certain point at a certain time. We kind of stick to where there are good facilities. So if there's like a free campsite, we might spend longer there, charge our batteries, or if there's a library, then we make use of their Wi-Fi. <laughs> or uh, use the laptop. Yeah. So although we do want to try and complete it as soon as possible, there is no specific time frame. More mm. of a budget. I More think. like free travel. <laughs> yeah, like we want to get around all 47 prefectures of Japan, but we also want to enjoy ourselves doing it. Yeah, but at least when it's cold south, when it's hot north. Which leads me swiftly on to our next question. A couple of people have asked, how are we going to survive in the cold weather? What will we do when it starts to get colder? So last night I think we had a maximum temperature inside the van of what, like six degrees? Ah, yeah, six degrees. Yeah. And the outside was like zero degree. So I think in the area that. We're in is not supposed to snow, but basically, as soon as it starts snowing, we're out. Like we will not survive in here without heating. We are snow. just going south, mm -hmm. and we are lots of heat ticks. So right now is a prime example. I have a hoodie on. I have heat tech on. We have three blankets, I think. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> I'm like perpetually cold, so my extremity is my hands and my toes get very yeah. very cold at night. So we have three blankets on the bed. We do also have a heated blanket, but we. We're scared to use it because we think it will drain our batteries. Well, I think like for winter is fine because it's more sunny in winter. That is true. I don't know how strong the solar is. If that makes a difference, though. Let's see. And we are going south, which is not like around the mountain. So. So that was kind of part of the plan was to go up north a little bit or up north from Tokyo, I guess, to those kind of mountainous areas first because we knew they'd get colder and snowier first. <laughs> We're avoiding all of the northern part of Japan for now, and hopefully we will survive. The winter, <laughs> lots of hot nabe soups, nabe that kind of thing to keep us warm. Shabu shabu sukiyaki, ramen. Mm -hmm. All right. So speaking of our clothes, someone asked us, did we decide our clothes combination, the black and white thing, before traveling, or was it just random? Just random. We have lots of like this kind of Japan T-shirts, like <laughs> Love Japan, Love Tokyo, that kind of T-shirts. We bought it when we started. And we just wear that. Yeah. So like, I think that was kind of the premise of our first video, and then. From there, it kind of naturally became our style because neither of us really care about fashion. It's way too much effort to care, especially if you're in a van. So it just makes things easier. The black and white thing is just because that's what sells, I guess. <laughs> like all of these like yeah, Tokyo simple. or like Japan T-shirts seem to be like yeah. mostly black or white, and that kind of suits us in our lazy <laughs> fashion <laughs> lifestyle. Yeah. Hi, next. Similar but not quite kind of related ish. How often and how do we shower? Uh, I don't know. Do we do we look like we smell? <laughs> I hope we don't look like we smell. So to begin with, when we started out our van life journey, it was kind of I, I don't want to say it was hot. It wasn't really summer. It was kind of the end of summer, so it was a lot more sweaty. So back then we were showering more, and also we were able to try out our solar shower. <laughs> we just used the one time, and it was an experience. <laughs> <laughs> the grass was the grass was up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the best experience, yeah. but it was a fun one, and it was also free. 
but now that it's colder, neither of us want to be out in our birthday suits in a glorified tent. So what we do is we look up like cheap centos or cheap onsens yeah. in the area. Mostly like 500 yen, so total 2 and 3,000 yen in a week. Yeah, so I think van life is in America and that kind of thing, they're kind of stuck to using gym showers. We don't have a gym membership because gym memberships cost a hell of a lot more than onsens probably do. Oh, yeah. And also we're not doing any exercise in a gym right now. <laughs> So for us, it's mostly just using public baths. And there are lots of lots of onsen around here. Yeah. At least like one in a small town. Yeah, you can find them anywhere. Yeah, so anywhere. it's not like a luxury thing. It sounds very much like, oh, I'm going to the onsen. But it's like, I care more about the shower than actually getting in the bath now. <laughs> Sometimes they don't have shower. Just a tap. Break. Yeah, all like, the stuff. Yeah. But, but we're staying clean. I hope, yeah. I hope that's, that kind of shows. Sometimes we look a bit greasier <laughs> than other times, but... So they give up. All right, next question. What has been our biggest hurdle traveling mm. and living in the van? Mm. Apart from showering less. <laughs> 夜暗くなるとすぐ眠くなる。Right? That I think was a very strange kind of life lesson for not life lesson but we are like asleep by nine now yeah, we're like always. an old couple by nine and wake up like by five yeah <laughs> so we really it feels very like kind of nomadic like getting used to the world clock <laughs> our body clocks rather than like alarm clocks which is quite nice i don't think that's a hurdle really but i think not so much feeling sleepy early but like having to make sure that we've cooked dinner early because if we don't have enough like battery for the lights mm. then we're like oh my god we're gonna have to like use our phone torch or something we have to make sure that dinner is ready by like five <laughs> so just kind of getting used to that new routine i think so that you guys are but then kind of yeah but hands down the hardest part of van life is getting enough battery especially because we're yeah. uploading vlogs we're filming we're constantly draining our batteries and for full disclosure since this is real van life we have had to stay in a hotel once or twice to charge yeah but now that we have our new solar panel that isn't so much um, of a problem. We didn't use it after. Yeah, we're quite jammy right now. We're doing okay. <laughs> Hi, next. So speaking of batteries, someone wanted to know if we plan on getting a backup or alternative way to charge our devices. So we talked mm. a while ago about how we were scared of using all of our electricity yeah. and that we didn't have an inverter. We have since ordered one, but have we used it once? Just mm -hmm. once in a day. It's scary to use at night, right? <laughs> I think for us, because we previously had one in our old car and we literally drained the battery, like the battery was dead. We couldn't move the car. I think mm. it has kind of become a bit of a scary, like taboo thing to use. And I know that's ridiculous. I know people do use them, yeah. but... And people make like sub battery, right? Yeah. One more battery. Yeah. But for us only like portable battery. Yeah. But so far, after we got the new solar, it's been fine, right? Yeah, and like, we can charge our batteries at the library or something. It's not a huge issue, but we do have one now. After everyone's recommendations, we just haven't really used it. Okay, go. okay. someone also wanted to know about our bike situation. So mm. we currently store our bikes inside. If you saw our van tour, then you would have seen mm. us putting the bikes in. And I guess people are really confused by that. They want to know why we don't store them outside. Uh, uh, it's gonna be rusty and someone can steal easily and it's hard to open the door if you put it outside. So on our smaller car, we did have one of those bike racks, but I think, especially for me, learning to drive in Japan, starting to drive straight away in this van, having a bike at the back of what feels like driving a boat is kind of ah, yeah, <laughs> a danger as well. That's true. Yeah, so not just to protect our van, not just to protect our bikes, but also to protect our surroundings and yeah. other people, it's probably best that they're inside and not outside. So also another very common question is about our work and about our finances. Mm -hmm. So someone wanted to know how long it took to save up to renovate the van mm. and also to travel. To make the van. Mm. We didn't save anything. <laughs> <laughs> we just used our money. And <laughs> we just bought cheap van. Yeah, I think instead of saving exactly, we just basically lived really frugally. We didn't spend a lot of money. We didn't really go out anywhere. We also used our 
like winter bonuses. So, it was mostly so from bonus, bonus money bonus, actually. Bonus, 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 bonus. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we got like an old van. This van's like 10, 11 years old. So secondhand van, a few secondhand materials to try and save costs. I think the biggest cost was probably the wood. Yeah, the wood <laughs> and Jack Lee. Yeah, that's the thing. Our external things, like our devices, are the things that cost the most money. But yeah, we didn't really save for the van. And that sounds really like we have a lot of money. It's just that our van was quite cheap to make. <laughs> As you can see, it's not the most beautiful work ever. But for us, great. It's home. <laughs> I would have got a point to Yeah. For traveling? For traveling, maybe nine months after making the bun something like that and even that like as we said previously the money that we have is enough to get us around a portion of japan we're kind of reliant on help from people like our coffee sponsors also revenue from any youtube ads that kind of thing we are hoping that it will be enough to get us around japan but if you do want to help us make sure we get around all of those 47 prefectures you can check out our coffee page below it would really really help us out we want to keep showing you all of these cool places let's travel with us and get around Japan. I took it. So someone else asked us, are you working remotely or did you mm. basically pack everything up for van life? After. Yeah. So I guess our social media has kind of become our remote work. It's not really enough to keep us going, but we're going to keep going as long as we can. Yeah. It, it sounds really crazy and it sounds irresponsible and ridiculous, but this is kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity for us. We built the van. Our purpose was to show everyone Japan. So we thought, why wait, basically? Why not? Um, and if it does fall through and we end up not having enough money, then the two of us will just pick up some like kombini yeah. odd job kind of things. <laughs> we basically just want to make sure that we yeah. show as much of it as we can, see as much as we can while we're still young enough to do it all. <laughs> all right, completely moving on. What is your favorite place in Japan? Uh, home. <laughs> okay, it's kind of related. Which is here for now. Home is where the van is. <laughs> the place? Yeah. <sighs> For oh, now, here, Gifu. Yeah. We came here, really nice time. Koyo Yabaishi. I don't know what it would be like during the rest of the year. I don't know if I would love it as much, but if you've seen our previous vlog, you will see how much I like rant and rave about how much I love Gifu. I've just been like, I love it here, it's so great, let's live here. <laughs> Miso maishi, yeah. tofu, tofu mai, beef maishi, rice maishi, mizo ishi ishi, mo. Psycho. <laughs> to be honest, like, I think for the most part, anywhere that we like in Japan is mostly about the food. <laughs> Yeah, we just um, think food. But that is kind of what van life is like. Mm. You wake up, you eat, you think about what your next meal is going to be, where you're going to eat your next meal, where you're going to take your bar. Done. Mm. <laughs> I think Gifu in autumn is a must see. I highly recommend it. I don't think it gets enough good press, really. No one really talks about Gifu that much, apart from Shirakawako. Gifu is not really in Japan. Gifu is a good place. If you get a van, if you can drive in Japan, 100% visit Gifu. All right. Next. What kind of wild life have you seen or have you seen anything strange along the way? Uh, lots of monkey. A lot of monkeys. <laughs> and lots of kamashika. Two. Which is apparently a rare <laughs> thing. Apparently yeah. they make you very lucky if you see one so we have double the luck. <laughs> but no bear yet. No. Ato wa... The most venomous snake in Japan, and you were just dancing around taking a video of it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't know it was Mamushi, and I touched the. Chun, chun, chun. Was... Why would you even do that with a regular <laughs> snake? Like, it's wild, just let it slither away. Yeah. So, yeah, a Japanese pit viper. We survived, and you thought it was a baby one, but apparently they don't grow very long, so it could have been like a teenager at least. I think that has to be the weirdest thing, strangest yeah. thing that we've seen. I never expected to see that. Anything else strange? To be honest, a lot of it is kind of like it's all new to us like yeah. for example eating on a leaf in Gifu driving on the beach <laughs> nothing that's like eh? strange speaking ah, hmm? strange what lots of people park around our car <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's the appeal of the onsen curtain like people enjoy they yeah. feel safe if there's onsens around like, but... even, even though like really big car park and just us and some few cars some people always park next always to next to us <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit disconcerting it's a bit kind of almost scary like eh, why even in the campsite we were in recently there was like an entire field you know how a campsite is and literally right next to us and in front of us people put up their tents don't know why we attract people <laughs> All right, next. Uh, so speaking of wild animals, someone wanted to know what the procedure is if we are attacked by a bear. Uh, We've talked about it a lot, if he but we haven't bear, seen one yet. Don't do anything. Play Just dead? 
Wait. See, if you turn around, they're gonna attack you. They back away and then slowly, slowly back. Or to avoid them, just have the bell. So if you watched our cycling video, us panicking about a bear, we've been ringing lots and lots of bells because apparently bears are scared of bell. The bears are scared, scared of bells. Just to it like alo alerts yeah. them. So yeah, you've been watching lots of like wildlife videos in preparation, I think. Why so about it? You're the one who knows all the facts. Next, a couple more questions about our travel plans. So mm. do we know about the Shikoku Temple pilgrimage? Oh uh, yeah, of so, course. So very, very famous. Very famous. So I was doing a bit of research about it because it is something that I've been interested in. So for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, there are 88 different temples in Shikoku, that little island of Japan, one of the four islands. It's apparently 1,200 kilometers long. Nako. And it crosses like a lot of the mm. main cities, so like Kochi, Takamatsu, Tokushima. Tokushima. So it goes through a lot of places that we will probably be going through anyway. I don't know how long it would take to film that and how we would continue uploading at the pace we are if we do it. But it does seem like one of those bucket list kind of things. Japan bucket list. <laughs> So yep, you can look forward to that maybe sometime. <laughs> and finally, a question about how we will get all around Japan. Mm. So we have 47 prefectures. That also includes going to little islands. So will we be going? Mm. How will we be going? Hmm, <laughs> ferry. To Kyushu or Shikoku, there are big bridges. Shizu, yeah. So not the problem. Well, <laughs> you say that, but I did do some research because I've been wanting to go to the Tokyo Islands for a long time. And only one of them actually has a car ferry so if we want to go to like all of those many 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 islands and I don't think we can go to all of those many many islands because there's even some that are like not inhabited we will have to think of other alternative ways so for example if we go to Yakushima or Kyushu. to yeah like the Okinawan islands mm. it actually costs a lot more money to go by ferry than it does to go by plane like it's a lot cheaper for some reason to go from Tokyo to those islands than it is to go from Kyushu to those islands. I looked up how much a ferry would cost, a car ferry from Kagoshima to Yakushima, so south to like one of the southern islands, and it was like 35,000 yen for our van. But then by air, it's still like 20,000. But if we want to go to the Okinawan islands, it's definitely, definitely cheaper to fly. So at that point, we might have to switch our van to another type of transport. <laughs> Yeah, it's our home, it's our little friend. I would like to take it all around Japan, but it depends on our finances at that point. Our goal yeah. is to show Japan, not necessarily to show it 100% of the time in the van. But hopefully you have been enjoying our van life journeys. We don't really show, but we live here. Yep, it stores all of our stuff. It stores our bikes and it's helping us to get around the place. Yeah. So if you have any other questions that are burning that you need answered, please write them down in the comments and we will try and get back to you at some point. Um, and mata dōga wo tanashinde kudasai. Yeah, I hope you've been enjoying them. And if you want to help us get all the way around Japan, please do check out our coffee page. Oyashas. And if you can't sponsor us financially, then the absolute best thing you can do is to share, like, comment, all that other stuff because it really helps keep us going. Yeah. And thank you for supporting us so far. Okay, so hopefully that has covered a lot of your questions and we'll see you for some more adventures next time. Hey, see no. Janne.